Hi. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're all here. Okay. This is my first time on Instagram Live. Is it? Yeah, thank you for this. Oh, it's so fun. It's so fun because we all just come and hang out. But specifically in this series, we're really talking about, Cousin Amy's there, Cousin Debbie's here. Um, We're really talking about looking at our lives and finding reasons to feel good. Oh, That's yeah. what I say. We're finding we're finding reasons to feel good. We're finding reasons to really explore that mystical tapestry, the quantum field, how it's informing all of our lives, how it's <laughs> doing amazing, you know, amazing things. And sometimes in the moment, we can't see the gem that's being laid at our feet. We just can't see it yet. And it takes a while. So, so I, my beautiful no, which is the title story in my memoir, um, was about how I finally got the job of my dreams after having a lot of no's, a lot of no's. <laughs> yes. um, and and For you. I, I, be, I began to realize later on, Elizabeth, that, oh my gosh, what if all the no's all the rejections and the heartbreak and things that feel like betrayal. What if all of those are beautiful no's and we're just being led. And if we can see it at the time, we're not going to waste weeks and months of, of being depression, you know, being depressed and sad and feeling like nothing ever goes our way and all those kinds of things, because I don't know about you, but there's no more time to waste. Oh, so, I, Every moment I invited matters. you in because, first of all, you are an Iowa Hawkeye like I am. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. And you are a titan in the personal development <laughs> oh industry. I don't know about that. The founder of Best Ever You. You have best-selling books out the wazoo, platforms, uh, shows. I mean, you know, what? what can't you do, Elizabeth? But I think... What I like about what you do is you are a major uplifter. Mm. Oh, oh, I hope so. That that's my whole thing. I love. I'm I'm fascinated by people, and I believe we are all important, and our moments matter, and you matter, and we matter. All of yes. us together. Yes. Uh, it's not the I I I show. It's the we 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 show. And um, it is just so important that we all go together. So hi, everybody, and cousins, and aunts, and uncles, and everybody. I know. Everybody showed up. Oh, wait, wait. We already have a stumper of a question. I love Uh this, Paul. When does a no mean keep trying, and when should you take the hint and change direction completely? Well, that is an excellent question. Maybe we should start there. That is an excellent question. Well, I, I would start by saying that if you're doing that centering mindfulness practice, then your gut feelings about situations are going to be really helpful. And I'm, I, this probably is going to show up backwards, but I'm in the never, ever, ever, ever give up crowd. Um, I, I really think people get that no and it gets them stuck and they get sad and all of these things. And you never know when you're going to, Breakthrough, think about it, Sherry. Think about that moment for you, even. I was thinking about that a lot after our conversation the other day. What if you had just packed your bag and bags and said, oh, yep, I'm done after after your... Yes, and, and I think Paul raises a good point because, you know, the beautiful no really is about understanding what's really going on when something you think you want is doesn't materialize something that you really, 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 really want and being able to look back and see how that closed door forced you to go another way. And next thing you know, oh my God, you get all that and more. So really it's about understanding um, heartache, rejection, um, not having- not getting stuck there. And realizing that there's so many more paths Um, I can, you know, I can think of so many no's um, in my own life. I I was thinking back to the moment where I walked up to uh, a gentleman who will remain unnamed to this day to ask him to the sweetheart stance in high school. And he looked at me and said, no, and I'm already going with somebody else. And I think about that and how it, how that no made me just 
go in a different direction. Just even the slightest things, if you go all the way back to being a right. kid, the different paths that you have. So um, there's sure. one false little thing. And all of a sudden, your trajectory, you know, like it's, you know, it's that whole idea a butterfly flaps its wings. There's, there's an earthquake somewhere on the other side of the world that one decision you know, uh, something that delays you for five seconds changes who you're going to meet the rest of the day. And, um, you know, there is, you know, acceptance of the fact that this is a magical life, oh. even when it doesn't feel like it, that it is a magical life is there, there's something about that, 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 that you can use as fuel to say, all right, instead of, Alas, nothing ever works out for me, which is what I used to do way back in the day. But alas, now you're saying, oh, I can't wait to see how this turns out. I can't <laughs> wait to see it where I'm, where I'm being led and not wasting the six months, you know, berating yourself, feeling badly, you know, telling yourself that story. So, so Elizabeth, what is, you know, I told you in order to come on, you have to be ready. What is your beautiful no? <laughs> I think my beautiful no is a moment where I decided to stop feeling like a victim. And um, I really um, felt just up to this point, uh, I was watching my dad recover from the stroke. And uh, they put him in a speech unit and um, decided to do an ABC game with him of A, you know, you say the letter A, what comes to you? And he said, aardvark, benevolence, courage, determination, excellence. F was a choice swear word that we've changed. To <laughs> and all these things. And in that moment, I reached into my purse and took out my notebook and decided at that moment to stop being a victim. Stop thinking exactly what you're saying about nothing ever turns Were out. You? Were you oh. saying that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. Um, I wow. really, I really have had moments in my life where I thought I was going to do this or that or another thing. And I've had some really good rejections, actually. My stack of rejections is solid. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty good from book rejections to news anchor rejections. Right. To, I mean, I remember being out of college going, I want to just want to be an anchor in the E Entertainment Network, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And just having no, 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 no and feeling lousy. And, but I had been resuscitated um, from food, food allergic reactions. And I was really yeah. feeling very, very, very less than, and I know there's a lot of things that people have that are worse than a food allergic reaction, but mine was, I have anaphylaxis and I have life-threatening food allergies. And I had had a couple allergic reactions, one while pregnant, six months pregnant, mm -hmm. and they're trying to re you know, revive me and cam and everything. And I just felt like crap. Uh, back then. And that was 98 and 99. And mm -hmm. uh, then all this happened with my dad. And it was a good six year period of time feeling like, look, um, a divorce, a remarriage, a move all the way across the country, yeah. another move all the way across the Stressful. country. All sorts of things. Stressful. Yeah. yeah. For sure. So that's And my so you decided when you said, I am going to stop being a victim, which means which basically means that you are gonna ex you are going to embrace the spiritual magic well, that's am. going on with those beautiful nose. Everything about me, except and it really mm -hmm. was like, almost like an inventory. Hi to whoever just said hi to me. I I can't see who that is. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> um, you know, really solid self acceptance, and that was an inventory where I really went through every area of my life from aging to weight to money to job to career to family I'm a mom of four boys who are now 19 to 25 and just really thinking hard about what footprints this is my like sentence what footprints am I going to leave because up to that point they had been a mishmash of things nothing really right. super mm, that I could really sink my teeth into and have it have me be really really proud of me me be proud of me, not seeking approval from other people, right. me being proud of me. And um, so it was really interesting, a little choppy too. You can feel the chop. And I hope everybody feels this chop because when you're talking about issues like these, they're choppy. They aren't smooth. It's not a, if it's a smooth process for you, boy, I want to meet you. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> if you're perfect, yeah, you know I what? really want to know you. <laughs> what, Elizabeth, I, when I was, uh, you know, really looking back and thinking about earlier days, because my, my 20s were, were just a shit show. It, it was crazy mint. And I think, you know, what, what I saw, the pattern I saw was I would make, misery was my compass, meaning, oh. so when you're saying, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to give that some shape because I think it's an important message, but here's some shape. I wouldn't quit under any circumstances until I couldn't get out of bed. So, so when you make misery your compass, that makes, basically means misery is waiting for you around every corner because of course you're supposed to make changes. Of course you're supposed to turn left or turn right or go this way and go that. And if you're only making changes when you can't get out of bed, then you are just putting yourself in, in, in a situation of experience misery after misery after misery instead of that more and this is this is how you smooth it out, I think. It's that gentle glide. It's like this feels good. This feels right. You know, let me let me center again. Let me get mindful. Let me get quiet. This feels good. That person feels good. This feels like this might be interesting. Where you can literally get at the, the front of the bow of your ship and not be just, you know, flipping around in the wind, like blowing every which way, which is how I felt for a long time. Oh, I so I love the way you just put that. That is so beautiful. Um, which, you know, you are beautiful and you, and <laughs> look at you. I love you so much. Um, but yeah, when you can kind of feel that's, that's a really good moment to really think about yourself and what feels right for you. We talk a lot about this because in the, in all of it, it's what, it's what resonates with you. And some people might not, some people may, and we're as women too, we're just phenomenal people pleasers. I mm -hmm. want everybody to just like me and love me and do this and that. And it's right. really hard to realize that some people, you know, you're not everybody's cup of tea or cup of coffee or whatever. And that's, that's a tricky one. And so when you pull back on that and realize that you're the CEO of you and your life and the captain of your ship right. and all those good things, it can really maneuver you uh, differently, and I think one of the one of the special um, things I've known you I've known you for a while now. We met on Twitter, and um, one of the one of the things that I really appreciate about you is just your really open mind and open heart. And it, this, these past two years have not been very easy for me with my dad dying in October of 2018. And I and I love all of you because this community has really lifted me up. Uh, especially yeah. my friend Chris Fuller too. You all were there for me, knowing that you know the, the head of the Best Ever You Network is not feeling so good right now, and it's yeah. and it's tricky because you feel like you're supposed to be leading, and instead, what one of the things that I've learned is we're all. I'll be quiet in a second. We're all learning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're you so funny. I mean? all you're so funny all the time. I know. I'm just gonna jump in and say, here's 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 what. Here's what we all want. You know, we, we all want to hear the truth. Yeah. We, we all want to hear that it's not, life does not, you know, not everything is that when I get out of alignment, my life is not smooth sailing. And then I go, wow, you're out of alignment. You know what to do. Get back into alignment. Um, you know, we all, the human condition is that there are going to be beings in our life who are going to move on to the next dimension before, before we do. Mm -hmm. And so we are always either going to be waiting to go to the next party, watching everybody else go. There's always going to be a sense of loss to, to grapple with. Yeah. There's always, you know, that that is part of this human thing, which is why the quicker we can we can come to the understanding that we never lose anybody, mm -hmm. that there is just this 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 bit of a veil you know it's a, a in in the quantum field that everything exists that the people we've always loved are still very much in it with us and that we teach ourselves and we practice 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 speaking to them oh. watching the signs they send you know i would rather get good at that than than get better at those habits that
that have kept me in the lower lower emotions. Oh, completely agree. You know, those yeah. are those are some worn grooves. I can go right back there and be oh. like, my God, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. What are we doing sitting around here talking? But I, you know, every time I feel those old patterns, it's like, no, that, that isn't how I operate the system anymore. No. I, I got, I have my hands on the wheel and here's what I know. I'm going to lean into the direction of happiness. No matter what is going on, I'm going to be curious. I'm going to be curious about the blessings and wonder and magic that are in the midst of it all. Where people loving you right now. There you should see the scroll and the feed, Sherry. Oh, I love you, agreeing, everybody. That's agreeing, so nice. agreeing with what you said. So and I and I do too. Such powerful, powerful energy. But we order. need each other. We do. We, we need we, each other. Yeah, we I, I completely agree. And so I think it's really important that um, you know, we're one of the things that I strongly believe is that we walk around um, aching. Um, and we sometimes don't let everybody know that. So kind of what you were just saying, there might be some multiple things playing in our backgrounds, but we're showing up with a smile and no one ever really knows what's going on in our world. So I love that you talked about truth and I love that you talk about energy and the higher vibrational um, things and, and being in a community where people embrace your truth and what's going on in your world and they show up with these big virtual hugs and smiles and love and moments like this um i just think are powerful yeah um, so i agree so i agree and it's such grateful. a really good use i mean if there's anything anything like like uh, i'm going to tell you a thought i'm having right now because this is Please? this is so it, it's it's overpowering me that my friend kathleen is it just joined us on the live and she and I knew knew each other in Dallas in 1981 and um, 81 82 83 and we worked at the same title company and we had piddly ass jobs I mean piddly ass I, know I, was, in, jobs. I was in a freaking <laughs> typing pool and I was I a got, shitty type of yogurt company for filling the ice cream cones too full so I understand. And she and I, we were yeah. both college graduates too, but we had these yeah. terrible jobs. Uh -huh. And she and I, on our lunch breaks, we decided to create this sense of importance and meaning in our lives by writing letters to the editor of the Dallas Morning News about the sale of, of planes to Egypt or, or something. And then from there, like we, we would have these very, very important important conversations and then right 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 Kathleen then we'd go back to our our piddly jobs but you know we there was a there was a sense of hope that we had that sure we have sh piddly shitty jobs right now and nobody would want to change places with us but you know incubating those dreams incubating those little dreams like what's it going to be are you going to go to law school are you going to do this are you going to do that what's it going to be and um that's the energy that we have to resurrect as we get a little older that's right we studied for the lsats together <laughs> i was going to go to law school until stan salata my father told me i'd have to go at night and pay for it and then i was like well how am i going to go dancing dad <laughs> at the, like at the field house, right? <laughs> yes. How are we going to get to the Oh, field God. The, par the party was just never over for me. <laughs> I, I just, that's all. That's really, I was like, night? Well, that won't work. But, um, but that's, that's what we're trying to do right now. That's what, what, what we're even having this conversation, which is, is there a way we can reframe what's going on that isn't totally the way we want it yet? Is there a way we can reframe it enough so we can shift our energy and literally allow it in? Talk about best ever you. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like you have to start by believing it's possible. So I, I work on myself. You know, I'm like, do you believe it? Do you believe? Do you believe you can live the life of your dreams? Do you believe the universe has your back? Do you believe? that there is this layer of magic to everything you do. And some days I'm like, no. 
<laughs> yeah, we were having that conversation earlier, like, no, <laughs> not feeling it today. But, you know, I think how you show up for yourself in every moment really seriously matters. And if you can get to that point where you back up everything and just think about how, time management, you know, it's, it, I think one of the things that people do the most is take time for granted. And if you really think about it and you really go all cerebral for a, a you know, a, a while and think about, you know, we have so many, so many moments, how are we spending them? And are, right. where are you spending them? Are you, are you spending them with good energy, bad energy, values, goals, beliefs, positive, open mind, you know, all the, all the higher vibration, or are you sad, upset, grieving? Yeah. You know, there's, there's, and it's not polarizing necessarily, but, you know, realizing that every day is made up of all of these different moments. Um, we do one, we do a couple really powerful things on Best Ever You. We, uh, Chris Fuller and I, we set that, that tone in the morning. Um, yeah. Sometimes how you wake up and show up sets the tone for the entire day. Yeah. And, and we really believe in gratitude, um, rooting deeply in gratitude. And I know that's sort of like a buzzword and a little bit getting a little overused, yeah, sort of, but, um, just the time management and gratitude woven together are very important to me because, you know, yeah, I've listened. I, I feel like I'm on borrowed time having, you know, having been, you know, having had a food allergic reaction while six months pregnant out with Cam, you know, when mm. I, when I woke up to kidney machines and a baby, you know, mm. not sure whether he was going to be born or not mm. or whatever. And a really let, you know, six months pregnant having anaphylaxis and we were in the hospital in Minnesota for a week it really makes you think, long and hard about how you're going to spend the rest of your days uh, here. And, um, and I, what I hope though, sometimes is it that it doesn't take something like that for people to have that wake up call for ourselves. You know, yeah. I hope, yeah. I hope that I, I don't, I don't need, you know, any more of that kind of thing to get to the next level. I'm going to take those experiences that I've had and I'm going to make sure that they stick. I don't want to invite any more of that learning in. Um, yeah, somebody, just, either, somebody asked a question. <laughs> yeah. First of all, um, let me also say it's okay to feel shitty. You get to. Yeah. You acknowledge it. You say, I feel awful. I feel hopeless. I feel in absolute despair. I'm so bummed out right now. And sometimes if you can just acknowledge it, then all of a sudden you can feel like you're not in resistance to your own being and you can start to let that flow away and pretty soon you can start to transcend it. I mean, that's what, you know, I'm, I was always trying to stuff those bad feelings away because I didn't think it was nice to be angry. I didn't think it was nice to have all those lower emotions, but the sooner that you can acknowledge that you have them there, you know, the sooner you can let it go. Here's, our friend, the, the clearance hunter. I'd love that. I got to figure out what you mean by that. What if you have a boss that's making your life a nightmare, but you think that staying in that job has other advantages that will get you ahead? Clearance hunter, I'm going to go right back to what I learned. You see if this resonates for you and see if it works. Make happiness your compass. Make gratitude. Yeah. Gra 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 gratitude guides you. Make happiness your compass. Like, it's okay. Like you like find the five great things about where you're at right now and five, five good things about that boss of yours, but then start to ask the universe, am I meant to move on? Is there another place? Start asking the questions, get the every, all that all stirred up and then watch for signs. Yeah. The, the other thing too is um, sometimes people need you more than you think they do. Um, so, um, just to flip that just slightly to another way of looking at that is you may have met for a reason and he, he or she might need your learning and your positive energy and so forth. And not that you give it all away or anything like that, but you might be a little bit aware. You might have some gems in there to, to pass along before you move along. That's right. <laughs> so leave, leave that job a That's better right. place. Um, but, I, and I think, I think we have to, we have to make sure that we don't have some wonky beliefs around happiness. <laughs> That's a great word. <laughs> you know, we have to make yeah. sure that we we aren't secretly afraid of oh. 
having everything we've ever wanted to come true. You know, we're humans. There's, there's some screwy tapes going on sometimes. We have to make sure that we have cleared the way so that happiness, that so it's easy to be happy. It's easy to move forward. It's easy to, to and, and not be like, oh, I'm happy. Eh, something bad's going to happen. Oh, I'm happy. Wonder what's going to come and steal it away. We've got to make sure that we've got all that stuff cleaned up. Don't you think? Oh, I so agree. And um, I call those, you know, there's limiting beliefs, fear, anxiety is a big one. All those things that tape you play in your head. I, you know, I, I, this is another thing that I've really, it's a beautiful, you know, it's another beautiful no. I was trying to think of a, uh, some other things too internally that are beautiful no's. That moment when you stop that no of like when you look in the mirror even and say, wow, I'm getting old. I've got 11s or I'm 51 <laughs> years old. I am 51 years old now. And I am, I will, I'm guilty. I'm going to admit this. I beat myself up in the mirror so much. Oh my gosh. You need I'm to stop so doing that. On myself sometimes. You need to stop and, doing that. And, and our friends remind us, but we, I, I think if we really all have some truth moments here, we do that a lot as People. You got to stop it. We do. And I think we do need to stop. You got to stop it. We um, got to stop it. You know, but, here, here's one of the things that we have to really come to terms with. That. Uh, the, uh, the hugs. <laughs> we, we, we really have to be the ones that love ourselves most. We can't keep trying to find it externally. And, 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 and putting that burden on the people in our lives. Yeah. We have to take on the job of loving ourselves best, loving ourselves most, and really, really moving through our days like it's true and like we mean it. Yeah, yeah, totally. And even if that's something like today, I'm going to really commit to drinking water, or today I'm going to walk 20 minutes, or for the next week right. every day I'm going to commit to doing 20 minutes of X. Even if it's the tiniest change you make in a positive direction, that one tiny change is something that like can so change your trajectory. That's um, right. It's just a little one. And if you if you take do a tiny change and even like hold it for a month, like if you drink if you add a cup of vegetables to your diet every single day mm -hmm. for an entire month and then the next month you go okay i'm going to drink 10 glasses of water a day pretty soon you have two two really small right. major changes going that's and, right um when you, you know what you know what those that big lofty i'm gonna lose 40 pounds in three weeks kind of new year's <laughs> program yeah. that and really, three days later you're like that well, really is self-sabotage we know that. We all know that. That is total. You have set yourself up for major sabotage. You know on some level that you cannot trust yourself to follow through on, on that and those crazy regimens, or you're only going to be able to hold it together for so long. So it is. It's the small things. I call them the esteemable practices. And you have yours, and I have mine, but they're the little things that make you feel like that you cared for yourself. That you feel. tended to yourself, that you looked out for yourself, and then everybody else gets to be off the hook. Nobody has to fill your love cup. Nobody has to fill your your worthiness cup because you you've taken on that job. Yeah, and you haven't stickered yourself all over the place with band aids. You know, you've you know you get to take the band aids off one by yeah. one by one by one mm -hmm. by one. And show some love and kindness and everything. We we talk so much about that. I'm um, I'm just I'm so grateful for the the people in my life. You know, I have a wonderful husband of 22 years and four boys, ages 19 to 25. And one of the hardest things for me, also aside from my father dying, was the kids graduating from high school and going off to college. Oh my goodness! It yeah. was like. Where are they going? <laughs> My little ones that I get to drive to school oh, every day and travel around with and everything. Yes. And it has been the most interesting thing. Um, it's so much fun when they when they come back. And I know I just sort of shifted gears, but where I'm going with that is sometimes we have these changes where I'm not in control. I'm not really in control of that change. You want your kids to go to college and do their things and fly yeah. and everything, but how it affects you. Uh, I went in the pantry and ate a lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
to, to <laughs> stuff down those emotions until I figured out, Funny. wow, okay, we had a lot of energy going. You know, it was like soon I didn't have six loads of laundry a day. I had like two or whatever. But um, those changes, I know a lot of women and men and so forth talk about that moment where the kids go and um, we gain 40 mm -hmm. pounds because we're emotionally distraught or we're this or that. Some people, some people are like, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> you know, party, travel, this, that. Or, or some people are like, yes, oh. this, this is right and true. And this is what should be happening. And I'm excited for it. You yeah, know, it, I, it really is that story we tell ourselves. Yeah, I have Just, that and chocolate. I was like, yes, Here go. And, and chocolate. what am I going to do with myself? Chocolate. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. So. I love you, too. Hi, I love everybody. you, too, you cutie patootie. Well, let's let's end with, on this note because I you just brought it up, and I think it's, 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 it's a really great way for us to kind of button our conversation. I have come to believe for myself that my entire happiness, all of my well-being depends on on my willingness to absolutely accept, encourage, be excited about, be curious about change. That that any I gotta I've gotta root out any resistance because it's coming. Because it's coming. I'm changing. The world is changing. The way we work and and communicate is changing. Everything is changing. And it will continue to change and continue to change. And, you know, it's like you're on a, 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 a bronco, like in the middle of the corral. And you can either be resisting and fighting that change or you can say, bring it on. That's this experience. I'm going down the river. I'm on a raft going down the river. And there's going to be twists and turns and twists and turns. And mostly, and it's going to be, and sometimes I'm going to be crying, and sometimes I'm going to be eating chocolate, and sometimes <laughs> I'm going to feel <laughs> like I'm on top of the world. But yeah. what I know is I'm not, I'm just never going to stand still. Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's that's what Percolate's about. That's that's the whole premise behind Percolate, Let Your Best Self Filter Through, is change. There's your best-selling book. Yeah. That's your best-selling book, book Percolate. Do. Yeah, yes. it's it's about change. It's it's the nine steps of change. We've added kind of a tenth one in there, but it goes from everything from awareness to peace to impact because right. you can um, you can really learn change. But yeah, we do those ten steps of change um, with with how how you deal with change is paramount because you're right. Yeah, you're so right, and so that's what I think too. I think no so more white knuckling. You've got to go. <laughs> Our, our success, yeah, our success revolves around uh, change. Uh, I really, truly believe, and uh, and then I also think our success is rooted in gratitude. I think you really have to kind of root yourself down in something that you know you can count on, so that when things go here or things go here, you right. go here, right. and you can center, and you know when you're off course. Um, and so forth, because you're right, you're so in control, and um, th those beautiful no's don't let them get you, that's get right. you down. That's right. Well, <laughs> yeah. you're not, yeah, that's right, that's right. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for, on thank this you night. for having me. How much fun um, to see your beautiful, shiny, beautiful, smiley face, and I love your hat, too. I'm looking, I'm just looking at oh, you. Oh, thanks. You know what, because I got so my COVID beautiful. hair. My COVID yeah, Rapunzel hair that I need to cut it. off. Yeah. Um, it's good but to anyway, see you. you. I'll be in touch. You we'll thank talk you soon. Welcome. Oh, that was fun, you guys. That was really fun. You guys have such great questions and comments. I love it so much. But, I mean, I think that's the big takeaway. Let's see what happens. Let's, let's, let's make friends with change. Let's make friends with it because it's coming. And let's let's... Let's fire up the idea of curiosity as it, as it relates to things going on in our lives. Let's be curious rather than judgmental. You know, I used to like mm, get to that judgment place super, super quick. Let's be curious. Let's embrace change. Let's, let's make lemonade. You know, listen, 
that is a very underrated thing. You know, I think it's very easy to be cynical. It feels like that's where the cool kids hang in cynicism, but cynicism and, and a joyful life do not go hand in hand. Discernment and a joyful life go hand in hand. Discernment, which is being super tuned in, leaning into what feels good and what's right for you, what's right for me, what's right for you. We have our own recipes for what that might be. Discernment is good. Cynicism, I don't think it's helpful. I don't think it's helpful. I don't think that's the happy path. And it might be, it might be what feels comfortable because we've practiced it so much. And optimism feels awkward because we haven't practiced it enough. Ask any of the good people. It's, it's the practice. Brendan, one of, um, I'm working um, with the co-founders of a new emotional network, a new app called Mind, M-I-N-E apostrophe D. And you can follow it on Instagram at Do You Mind. And some amazing teachers, amazing guides, amazing experts are on there. And, I, and, and Brendan is one of them. And he, he was here earlier. Um, but those, you know, I lean into people like that to keep reminding me that optimism is an act of courage. Optimism is like, that's your suit of armor. That's your protective force field. That's where you're always looking at, looking for magic, looking for the wonder, looking for those mystical threads, looking for the phone call that comes, that points you on a new path, looking for that chance meeting, that, that word you hear that goes, whoa, why does that resonate? That's what we're all here to do for each other. And listen, here we are right now on an evening having this conversation together. That's amazing. That is amazing. I mean, I just watched that new Tom Hanks movie, um, news of the world. And I had read the book when it came out a few years ago. It's a beautiful novel, but it's like, go back to the pioneers days. My friends, you had nothing. Some guy had to ride a horse across the country to come and read the news to you. You know, we have the ability to just connect for 30 minutes and consider the possibility that everything's going to be all right, that everything's working out for you and for me, and for our planet, that it's going to be okay. And we can, we can always like rise up. We can always find that, that better place inside of ourselves. So here's what I say. I feel uplifted. I hope you feel uplifted. Be very careful what you let in. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're watching a lot of news, you might want to trim that down just to snoot. But be careful what you learn. Seek this out for yourself. Seek out people who want to have this conversation with you. Because this is it. This is the stuff. This is how, this is how you wake up feeling good and go to bed feeling good. You just keep reminding yourself that it's going to be okay. I send you so much love. I know. Look at I needed this tonight. I needed this tonight. Love, peace. Thank you, Elizabeth Hamilton Guarino, for joining us. Um, I love this episode of The Beautiful Now. So good. So powerful. All right. Night, everybody. Night.